Okay. But so it turns out that, I mean, there's no magic here. There's a way of computing the range of numbers that you're working with, right? Um, if we're to start with unsigned integers, so integer values without a sign, so it's like just positive numbers, you notice that uh, the total number of integers that you'd be working with is just two raised to the number of bit representation that you're using. But because you start from zero, it has to be one less two raised to the bit representation. So the simple formula you're using is just two to the power n minus one. If, if, we, if we are told to say we are, we are using, we, we are working with unsigned integers, just positive integers, no negative numbers, using four bit representation. Maybe four is, is a lot, right? Let's try two bit, two bit representation. Using two bit representation, how many numbers would we have? Just in numbers, how many integer values can you represent using two bit representation? Okay, what are the numbers? Okay, using binary, what are the potential combination of numbers? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one, using two bit representation. If we were to map these numbers, this is zero, this is, this is? So what we're saying is, when we're using two bit representation, we only have four numbers, zero, one, two, three. Two to the power two minus one is the range. Zero up to two to the power two minus one is the range we'll be working with. This is making sense. There's a formula for us to derive the integer range that we'll be working with using two bit representation for signed integers. It's two raised to the power two minus one. Then we'll come up with a range. The range we are saying is, it's going to be zero up to two to the power two minus one, which is effectively zero two. Two to the power two is four minus one, which is zero two three. Zero one two three. This is making sense. So like if you're given like a four, four bit representation, the range of numbers you'll be working with is gonna be, uh, zero two, two to the power four minus one, which is zero all the way up to, please. Oh, fine. It's zero to 15. Do you understand what we are saying now? Yes, yes. For, so for saying integers, really it's not difficult for us to kind of do this. All right, and really it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using. I mean, like if you're using byte representation, which is eight bits, same formula holds, right? Two to the power eight minus one, which is zero up to 255, zero up to 255. Half away, which is 16 bit representation, is zero up to 65, uh, 535, right? And then you can go all the way up to 64 bit if you want to. One way, to, I do approach, it's supposed to be power 32, not eight. Correct this in the slides that have been shared with you. Annotate this and say, correct this. I won't correct it deliberately. You must annotate it so that we correct this. Okay, so, but the question really is, if we can, if we have like a formula which we can derive using um, unsigned numbers, what about signed numbers where we have negative numbers? It turns out there's formulas you can use as well. Right? You don't have to manually do it. So again, let's say we are working with um, signed integers using sign magnitude. Let's start with, uh, with uh, the simplest two-bit representation using sign magnitude. How many numbers do we, first of all, how many numbers are we going to have using two-bit representation? How many numbers do we have? Four. Four. But when we have sign magnitude, remember that we must start with, uh, uh, what do we start with? <laughs> anyway, the point I was trying to drive at is because of the additional zero, if we have four numbers, you notice that uh, things change slightly there, right? 
Is this making sense? Sorry? What, what else can we, what, using, using sign magnitude, what other numbers can we represent using two-bit representation? Okay, negative, negative two, okay, fine. Ne positive two here, negative two. Okay, negative three and positive three. But I thought we we're using two-bit representation. If we're using two-bit representation, how many numbers can we have in our range? Yes, how many do we have here? Okay, fine. I don't know if this is making sense. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying that because we have two zeros, things change slightly here. There are two things that are changing here. Number one, we have two zeros. Number two, one of the bits must be a signed bit. So, if one of the bits is a signed bit, using two bit representation, we're only left with one bit to represent the magnitude. So the range has shrunk slightly. If this is confusing, what we are saying is, using signed magnitude, there's a formula. This is the formula. So if you're using two bit representation, the range of numbers that you are going to have, the signed integers that you're going to work with is positive or negative, two to the power two minus one, which is positive or minus. Is this correct? So the range of numbers you're going to be working with using sign magnitude is just this. And we know, we know why, because using sign magnitude, the leftmost bit has to be the sign bit, meaning that the, the number of potential values we can work with is shrunk. Again, really, it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using, it could be a byte, it could be half a word, it could be a word, it could be double word. All you have to do is just plug in the numbers, but remember, it's n minus two minus one. Right? It's n minus one because the sign bit, there's a bit which is no longer part of the uh, computation for the size of the integer, but it's reserved for the sign. But what about one's complement, right? Um, oh, this is wrong. Sorry, I apologize for this. Apologize for this. <sighs> what I was thinking here. So for one's complement, uh, oh yeah, it's the same thing. So for one's complement, because because we are faced with the same problem as as um, assign magnitude, the problem of having two zeros, same formula. Things only change when we are working with two's complement. Why do, we, do we, why do we have to change them? Because we've, we've kind of like solved the problem we had where we had two zeros. We effectively got rid of the negative zero. So instead of having a negative zero, we instead have an additional slot for a negative number. So the range then becomes negative two to power n minus one all the way up to positive two to power n minus one. Two to power n minus one minus one. Observe the, the difference here. For, for one's complement, we, we were subtracting ones from both sides. But, but in, in the case of two's complement, because we no longer have the problem of having a negative zero, the additional uh, placeholder or bit, or bit is going to be allocated to a negative number. So effectively, we'll be representing a range negative two to the power n minus one all the way up to positive two to the power n minus one minus one, right? And so really, again, if we are to go through our range of, of positive numbers, using two bit representation, what is the range of numbers we can use to represent two's complement? We can represent using two's complement. If we are working with two's complement, what is the range of integer values we can use or we have access to? Negative two. Let's go with the formula: negative two to the power two all the way up to positive 
2 to the power minus 1 minus 1. Right? Don't forget that. So effectively, the range of values we'll be working with is 2 all the way up to 1. Thank you. And, and this makes sense, really, because we know that if we have 2-bit representation, forget the signs, if we have 2-bit representation, how many values are we going to be working with? Using 2-bit representation, how many values, how many integers, the total number of integers? Is it 10, 20, 55, 1,000, 1 million? 4, right? So if it's 4, we know here that it's going to be negative 2, negative 1, positive 0, positive 1, right? That's it. 1, 2, 3, 4. This making sense. And really, it doesn't matter which bit representation you're using. Um, you just have to plug in the numbers. Now, granted, I mean, if you want to, you can probably form a mental picture and try and simulate, oh, what range can I have here? But a boo -hoo, lo and behold, you can never, uh, good luck writing down the range on the piece of paper using the two-bit representation, right? Formula, that's a key thing here, not the formula, the differences in the formulas, right? Is this making sense? Yes. Now, if guys, if you don't have any questions, I, I guess we'll end here. Um, I don't know if there are any comments for like number systems and, and all these fancy things we've been doing. Are there any concerns, comments, clarifications, additions, subtractions, divisions?